As you have probably seen by now, Impact works differently than most configurators as it is dynamically linked to local files on your desktop in order to save you time going back and forth downloading blocks from the web. Here's a look at the general architecture of Impact. It starts with an Excel-based program with all of the business rules, pricing, application information, part numbers, and user guides built in. This can be used on a standalone basis for quick pricing or for non-SOLIDWORKS users. We have a summary sheet and device utility sheets, one per device. If you have SOLIDWORKS, it can drive model insertion, changes, and modifications in the SOLIDWORKS environment automatically from an Excel dashboard. It talks to SOLIDWORKS via a standard API. No special software needs to be installed. Let's run a quick demonstration. Here we are on our blank summary page. Let's go to Add New Device. Scroll down until you find the device that you want. Let's use Curve. You'll see it highlighted in green in the preview, so you know we have the right device. Let's click OK. Next is the Device Utility page. We'll have to name the device. We'll call this Test Curve 90. We can move this box over to the side and then adjust our palette width and length. You can see the options in the dropdown. We're going to leave it at 240 by 240 millimeter. We'll choose our curve angle. For this, obviously, 90. For drive type, we'll choose external. For our side 1 and side 2, one will be the drive and one will be the return. And you can set those either way you wish. Our drive will leave at 187 because this will be slave driven from the conveyor. Just a note that you can also manually enter your desired palette width and length if you want a custom size. So you can see we decided to change it here to 300 by 300. Now if we click Create and Insert SOLIDWORKS Model, it's important that you have a blank SOLIDWORKS model open and that the file name is the same as your impact file. And you can see that it quickly dropped our 90 degree curve into our model. So if we head back and confirm, you can see the bill of material with an instant part number and pricing. Now, if we double click the curve and select Modify, we will be taken back to the device configurator and here we can make changes if we need. Let's change the pallet width and the pallet length to 320, as well as swap drive locations. Now we'll click Update SOLIDWORKS Model. Back in our SOLIDWORKS Model, those changes have updated instantaneously. Back on our summary page, notice that this line item part number and price has changed as well. Now let's add our conveyor. We'll do that by clicking Add New Device. We'll choose Transport Conveyor Unit. We'll name this Test Conveyor 101 and then we can slide this box out of the way. For conveyors, we have a really convenient configuration wizard. It makes it really easy to set all of your conveyor information. A really great feature is as you update your information, the preview on the bottom left updates with you. We'll choose two strands for this demo. For a width configuration, we can choose an overall width, a guide width, or a pallet width. For this, we'll choose pallet width. We'll match our curve, which was set to 320, and enter our length as 3000. For drive position, you can choose a left, right, or center drive, or you can enter a position manually. Here we'll enter 187 since our curve is going to be slave driven. For a belt type, we'll choose black anti-static belts. You can see there are a lot of options. For this, we hope to use a quarter horsepower motor, so we'll have to set this at a size 30 gearbox. For drive position, you can choose position 1, 2, 3, or 4 to put your motor where you want it. For worm position, as you can see on the bottom left, this will orientate your motor either left or right. Gearbox ratio is set based on your desired speed. Finally, motor angle, and as you choose this, you can see once again that the preview shows instantaneously on the bottom left. Now, we're going to want to configure our cross members. You can see that we can set our left justified cross member. We're going to want to move that out of the way since it's interfering with our slave drive. We'll set that to 350. Now our distance between cross members, we can set that at 1500. And our right cross member, we'll decide to set in a little bit more at 150. Next, we can configure our breakpoints. Breakpoints are where the main conveyor beam is split for either shipment purposes or for coordinating the end of the conveyor with the end of your machine. You can set breakpoints so the conveyor can be disassembled exactly as you need it. Let's set our breakpoint at 2000, and you can see it shows you exactly where they're going to set up the brake. We can set another breakpoint at 1000, and then you can see we have a conveyor that's easily broken up into three pieces. We click OK, and since we're done configuring, we can click OK again. And now we're ready to create and insert into our SOLIDWORKS model. And you can see we now have our curve and our conveyor in the model.
If we head back to our summary page, you can see both of our devices listed here with part numbers and instant pricing. Let's double click our conveyor and choose modify. Just to note that you do not have to use the wizard. You can choose from the information provided in the drop down boxes or enter your information manually. And just to make that process easy, when entering dimensions, you can enter in millimeters, inches, or feet, and the information will convert automatically. Another useful tool is the application demands. If we increase the number of pallets, the number of stopped pallets, and the amount of weight, you can see that your application demands are increasing. The limit is broken, and you can see that your gearbox and your motor need to be more powerful. You will see, by adjusting those, we have satisfied our application demands. At any point in the process, you can also click the Help button, which will pop up some question marks. When clicking those question marks, you'll get additional useful information to help you along the process. Let's go ahead and click Update SolidWorks and go back to our summary page. A quick note, you are able to increase quantities right here on the summary page and your prices will update automatically. Now, back at the model, we can show you our next useful feature, which is our snap tube mating. It's as easy as holding down the alt button and our predetermined mates will allow your curve to snap right to your conveyor. Then you hold your control key to copy your curves. You can copy your conveyor and begin building your loop. You can see that I take a second just to pre-orientate the device. It allows the snap tube mating to happen even easier. Just one more conveyor and then we'll have our nice 90 degree loop. And if we head back to our summary page, we can use a cool function called Count Parts in SolidWorks. And this will update your quantities and your pricing based on whatever is in your model. Then in SolidWorks, we can click on a part and back on the summary screen, we can click on modify that part. If we wanted to increase the length of that conveyor, we could do that right here and update SolidWorks. You can see in our model that it has increased the size of our loop. Thanks for listening to our brief training video. We hope it was useful. For more information or a personal training session, please contact Flyline.